Well, this is the first time I make a video in English, so uh, you will uh, uh, you will excuse me for my poor English. I, I will do my best, but uh, this is not guaranteed. Well, my name is Jean-Pierre Petit. Uh, you can find uh, information about me uh, in the Wikipedia website. Uh, I am 78. Uh, I'm retired and I'm a researcher. I, I work in, in a very different fields. Uh, initially, I was a plasma physicist and I worked on plasma instability. You can find uh, my work in Wikipedia if you uh, find the page. Uh, electrothermal instability, uh, Velikov instability. I mastered the problem of um, uh, two temperature plasma instabilities. Uh, well, this is a very important problem just for uh, now because uh, uh, military want to take place in the intermediate re uh, altitude. With airplanes, you can't go uh, more than uh, 30 kilometers. And with satellites, you cannot go down too much. So you have this uh, uh, layer. And here is uh, uh, the domain for hypersonic uh, airplane, uh, Mach 10 uh, uh, flight. And this is only possible with a MHD driven inlet. Well, I will not develop this further, but uh, this is one field where I made a lot of work. And uh, now I'm interested in, in cosmology, in the structure of the universe. Uh, I have published many papers about it. Uh, yeah, as you will. Uh, discovered that on the, on the page in the Wikipedia. Uh, I had the opportunity to use a very strange information, exotic information about what Sakharov called twin universes. And uh, I will say a few words about it later. But here I'd like to, to you know, I said that science has all kind of uh, thinking is uh, an organized system of beliefs. There are beliefs everywhere, belief in religion, but belief in politics, belief in sociology, and we have beliefs in science too. And uh, you, you just look back to the history of science, you will see how all these beliefs uh, move. And the big question now is, uh, what is life made for? I will not give you a, uh, an answer from a relig religious point of view. Uh, I will try to have a, a phenomenological uh, point of view about the problem. And I, I would say that uh, life becomes more and more complex and extends its uh, uh, communication field all the time. Uh, we are more and more complex. Uh, life, living creatures are more and more complex. Uh, jellyfish is more complex than uh, one cell animal. And uh, we, communicate, we communicate more and more. And right now, for the uh, case of, the, of mankind, we can communicate from any point of the earth to the antipodal point. I can take my cell phone and call somebody in, in Australia, New Zealand, you know. So uh, I make the hypothesis that uh, the basic uh, goal of life is to extend communication. Well, if it's true, uh, what will be the future? Uh, we have reached Pluto. Pluto, it took nine years of travel to send a probe there. Uh, 
half term probe and nine years of trip. Uh, we can go to the moon, but with rocketry, we are not going to 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 go out of the solar system. The solar system is a very small, very tiny object with respect to the huge distances between stars. You know that uh, the closest star, uh, Alpha of Saturn, is uh, ten thousand more distant than the solar system. So, the question, excuse me, quoi? <laughs> no, okay. So, uh, the question is, uh, is it the end of the story? Are we going to keep to, to confined uh, in the solar system? Or are we going to have contacts with other uh, uh, tribes? <laughs> living on, on all those planets. Well, if you go back a few decades ago, there were scientists that believed that we were the only living creature in all the universe, <laughs> really. And uh, that life was very improbable. Uh, now, you know that we discovered an enormous number of planets. And now the, the goal is not to find a planet where the life could develop, but a planet where the life is already developed. How could we know that? Uh, around a planet, you will have an atmosphere. And in, on the Earth, we have free oxygen. And this oxygen was not the primeval atmosphere of our planet. Uh, the primeval atmosphere of the planet was made of carbon di dioxide, uh, water, uh, uh, and other uh, chemical components, but nothing like uh, free oxygen. The oxygen has been made by living creature, by uh, 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 cells in the water. The, the air you, you breathe was made by a living creature. And uh, so, if um, uh, someday we can capture the spectrum uh, of an atmosphere, the, the, uh, the planet can put, take place in front of its star. And the light of the star will intersect with the atmosphere and we will have a uh, modified spectrum that will make us, uh, um, give us the possibility to say, well, there is oxygen there, so life does exist. At what level? We don't know. It must be just a mono, monocellular creature of a very uh, uh, advanced creature. And by the way, uh, we are not sure that we are the more sophisticated creature <laughs> in the universe. Uh, well, if you read the, the, the speech of Andrei Sakharov in 1975, uh, he received the Nobel Prize for Peace. And uh, he, he, was, uh, he could not uh, leave uh, uh, USSR, so Elena Bonner went to uh, Oslo to read the, his talk. And look at the, the end of the talk. He says that the problem of a change with other civilization is something very important. Well, you know, you have uh, uh, this, uh, such project like SETI to capture radio waves uh, sent by a distant uh, civilization. Mm. Well, for me, it's like uh, looking to the United States from the Europe and trying to see if there are sm uh, smoke signals made by Indians, you know. Uh, I'm not very confident to <laughs> for this capture message. Well, uh, well, suppose that the goal of life is to extend communication. So, technology is... Uh, uh, something that must happen on the planet, because we need technology to, to go outside. We, we can't go to the moon 
uh, uh, with, uh, like birds uh, with big wings. It doesn't work. So uh, we need technology. And we can't make the hypothesis that this technology is inscribed in the program. Uh, life appears on the planet and then it develops, it becomes more and more sophisticated. Uh, a species appears with an intelligence, uh, who has hands and we can make things. And then technology becomes its, its attributes. And uh, this technology, I believe, it's done to give the living creature of a planet the possibility to be in contact with distant stars. There is no other way to, to, to go there. We need that. So, as there is this the end of the story, nothing new, really new, will appear, or something new will appear, uh, will uh, um, come that will change our vision of the universe. Well, about my personal work, uh, they are very close to Sakharov's work too. Uh, we could talk about twin universes, but the best thing is to to think about uh, a paper uh, leaf. Uh, look, this is a paper leaf, and we can picture two distant points, A and B. And I can make grids on these uh, two sides. And look on this piece of paper, the two grids have different uh, scales. So it just means that if you consider that the number of squares you, you cross, this is the distance, well, there are two different distances between two points on this space, two-dimensional space. And uh, I have published paper, and I think that this is evident to me that we live in a bimetric uh, universe with two different distances. Well, uh, what does it mean? <laughs> uh, how can I cross uh, uh, such large distance? Well, it's a question of the mass. We have um, dark matter. We have dark energy. We have acceleration of the universe. Well. We have a uh, uh, universe is a mixture of positive matter and negative mass matter, negative energy matter. This negative energy was matter was forbidden by the quantum theory of field. Uh, in my paper, I explain why it's it's ended now. You know, because if the universe accelerates, then you need negative pressure, and the pressure is a density of energy per unit volume. So uh, it means that negative energy must be taken in, into account to explain this uh, acceleration of the universe. Negative energy and negative mass. Well, why don't we see this negative mass? Because negative mass emits negative energy photon. And your eyes and mine are not equipped to capture negative energy photons. So you don't see it, and that's, we call it dark matter, we call it dark energy. But uh, this is nothing but negative energy and negative mass particles. So today, you have guys working in uh, mines, very deep, 700 meters deep. Today, they, to, each day they take the lifter and they go down and down. And they try to grasp uh, astral particles. They don't, they don't find any. Uh, in uh, French Alps, well, a guy who works in a tunnel, and ab above his head, he has 1,700 meters of rocks to be protected from uh, cosmic rays. Uh, and Italian ladies do the same in the Grand Sasso. But they don't find any, they don't measure any things. And uh, I would just mention a sentence of the French researcher. He said, we are waiting for these particles since 22 years, so we must be very close now. <laughs> and uh, there are a third solution. They 
you have a Nobel Prize and 600 researchers and technicians who worked on this project and two billion dollars to put a system on the space station to, to capture astroparticles. But they don't find any. And look, we are in now in 2015. I make a prediction. They will never find any because they are not there. Where is this negative ma particle, negative mass? This negative mass is repelled by the positive mass. So there is no negative mass in a galaxy. They are between the galaxy. So I suggest they should install the detection system between galaxies. Well, you realize it's not very easy. So we are very we are obliged to think about a very deep change of our vision of the universe. The universe classically is like this paper leaf but with a single grid. This grid is called a metric by mathematicians. And these metrics come from Einstein equation. But if you take this piece of paper, and if it has two sides with two different grids, then you have two field equations, coupled field equations. And one is the Einstein field equation. This is not in contradiction with general relativity, because when we look at a place like the vicinity of the sun, the earth, well, the density of negative matter is so weak that the system just is, is just condensed in the Einstein equation, which is one of the two equations. Well, everything must be played on the uh, football field of science. Uh, but if we go back to this piece of paper, you don't you see that we have uh, different grids, so different distance, and uh, the other side corresponds to the way particles cruise when they have negative mass. So. What is suggested in the paper I published in 2014 uh, in Modern Physics Letter A, it's a biometric model and so on, but it shows that you, you can build a solution from the system, mathematical solution, with two speeds of light different. So look at the piece of paper. Uh, on one side, you have big squared but few, few squares. The distance are short. And suppose the, the, the span of the squares represents the velocity of, of light, the distance that you light cruise in one second. So from one side to the other side, the speeds of light are different. And if you look at the example, at, the, at this image, you see that uh, the, the longer is the distance, uh, the shorter is the speed of light. So we live on one side of the universe. Uh, the distances are very long, very uh, large, and the speed of light is very short. But if we could reverse the mass of a vehicle and people inside, then we have very large velocity of light and the distances are shortened. So that it means that I really believe that uh, interstellar uh, stellar prob travels are possible. They are, n uh, they are not impossible. Well, how can, can it be managed? It must be less complex than uh, Michel Kaku said. You know, Michel Kaku uh, evokes uh, um, civilization able to, to, to deal with the energy of the sun. No, no, not so. But when a civilization uh, reaches uh, the atom age, when we made the explosion of uh, uh, the atomic bomb uh, in Hiroshima, we entered in a, 
uh, calm down. Uh, let me take a few examples. Suppose we are in uh, 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 one eight two two. Well, Mr. Barlow, British man, invented the Barlow's uh, wheel, the Barlow's wheel. And with a small current, this wheel turned slowly. And then suppose you come and you say, you know, guys, within eight years, you will uh, run faster than 100 kilometers per second with a vehicle. Uh, uh, propelled by electric motors, and it happened. A uh, uh, Belgium, uh, Jastini, uh, built uh, a car uh, mo uh, with electric motor and battery inside, and uh, uh, the name was La Jamais Contente. Jamais Contente, it means in English, uh, this car is never happy, you know. <laughs> It's, it never fast. It always wants to go faster, and uh, Justin he believed that this kind of car would replace the the cab with the horses, but uh, it didn't work because the battery was so heavy and it took so many times to to put electricity in it. But you know, in uh, when the Barlow's wheel was invented, you could say in eight. Years you will have, you will run faster than 100 kilometers per second, per, 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 per hour. Excuse me, my English not so good. Well, though, now we are in 1904, and the, the, the Wright brothers have, have flown uh, their flyer. And then you come and you say, within 44 years, you will go faster than the sound. You will cross the ocean and the continents. Guys, really, you're mad. Look at this thing. Uh, it flies, OK, but it's made of wood and a piece of, like a paper, a small motor. Yes, yes. Within 44 years, you have the Bell X1, piloted by Chuck Jagger, and he flew faster than the sound. Well, well, now I suggest we go back backward in time, backwards in time. Uh, in 1945, we live close to Hiroshima, and we just watch explosion of the first atomic bomb. And then imagine somebody would say, "Oh." You have entered the atomic age. Well, within two centuries, two centuries, your your vision of the universe will be completely changed, geometric vision, and uh, it will have developed technology which will be much more advanced than this uh, primitive uh, use of new uh, nuclei. nuclei. So you will be able to achieve uh, interstellar, interstellar travels. Uh, you know, uh, think about atomic science, atomic energy. This is uh, uh, just the beginning of the uh, chemicals of, of nuclei. Uh, uh, we, we can just make primitive reaction, but someday, will be able to reverse the mass, inverse the mass. Uh, I think that it occurs in the core of neutron stars. When their mass becomes too large, they will reach criticity. And then the excess of matter is inverted, and it, it escapes simply. I have a paper about that. That's the beginning of a big adventure, big story. Well, suppose somebody would say, within two centuries, you will go out of your planet. You will leave this planet. You will go to other systems. You won't. You will not believe them. And I said also that when living creature 
uh, have a big change, uh, morphologic change. There is a software, software that comes uh, with to control this new ability. And uh, the, the technology is uh, an aptitude, it's something you grasp on, you handle. So you need a software to control technology. And of course, we are always thinking about it, because technology is not a matter to develop, it's a matter to destroy too. And then we are thinking that what will happen in the future? We are obliged to think about your future. We have not the right for mistake. We can't make any mistake for the future. Well, we are making new big mistakes, like uh, uh, nuclear energy for, uh, uh, to produce energy. That's a mistake. We cannot manage the waste uh, and so on. And this is very risky. Uh, I don't think about the bombs. It's, it's evident. Well, uh, so uh, the, um, this software, this, this software, this uh, behavior, uh, we call it moral, morality, uh, conscience. What is a conscience? The conscience, it is the ability to think about my own future. What will I be in the, in the future? What, what how we live my my children uh, all the rest you know well uh, so I have a bad news for 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 us uh, look at the solar system you have many planets you have the earth you have Venus you have Mercury Mars what is the difference between the Earth and the other planets? We have a magma inside, and this magma is very active. And then it produces the, the move of the continents. So, uh, do the other planets have continents breaking? No. Because what is uh, the signature of the moving of these continents? Because when uh, it takes uh, uh, South America and Africa, they separate. And then in the middle, you have under the sea uh, a part which is always breaking and breaking and breaking, uh, like a scar. And it, it cannot be closed. And if you would evaporate the ocean, from a very big distance, you would see the Earth and say, oh, continents are moving, because you, this is a sign. And you don't find this sign on other planets. Well, there is no seismicity to They are very quiet. I tell about uh, uh, telluric planets, of course. Uh, well, Io is a satellite of Jupiter, of Jovis, and Io is very active, but this is because tidal effect, because it's very close to Jupiter. Jupiter produces, but other planets are very quiet. So why are magma is so active? Because of the birth of the moon. Now scientists uh, uh, are think in general that uh, m the moon comes from the collision of the Earth. The Earth was hit by a, a small planet whose size like, was like Mars. And the Moon is an ejecta. Uh, well, uh, the, the, the material that made is, the Moon is made of is very similar to the crust of the Earth. So it, it goes with this hypothesis, hypothesis of a collision. Then this big planet sunk. Uh, to the center of the Earth and constitute its art core, and the ejecta formed the Moon. But this mass M was coming with its own velocity V. And what is 
uh, half part of mass multiplied by the square of velocity, we call it kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy has to be dissipated. So it was transformed, transformed into thermal energy. And this thermal energy makes the magma move again. So we had a bad, it was bad for us because the birth of the moon um, caused the activity of the magma. And what, what is the consequences? First, we have a single continent which is breaking part into parts. And when the, we have tectonic activity, the two plates they go like that and they form mountains, like the Alps. The Alps, the European Alps, they are formed because Italy is eating us. Uh, well, what about Himalaya? Himalaya, uh, uh, India was close to the southeast of Africa and then it crossed the ocean and hit uh, Mongolia. And now this movement is still continuing and it, uh, we call it Orogenia. Orogenia is the birth of mountains. Now uh, there is a small question. Suppose we stop the movement of the magma, uh, what will happen? Then you have rain, you have ice, you have all these things that would make the mountain be flat. So how much time would it take to make Himalaya and Alps and uh, old mountain to disappear? The answer is about 10 to 100 million years. This is not very long. So uh, on other planets you have no mountains. And this gives you the answer why the extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial come to visit us? Because they have no mountains, they want to practice skiing. <laughs> uh, well, on their planet, you have no mountains, you have single continent. So we can think that the number of species, uh, vegetal species, animal species, and even human species, human tribes, is hundreds less than on your earth. So, uh, right now, on the earth, you have hundreds of tribes fighting each against the other. Uh, each group of men think that the other guy there are enemies, uh, they are uh, strangers. So we have to fight against them. And when I was talking about this new technology, which are very close to, 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 to come to us, so we can manipulate the mess, but also later manipulate the electric charge. And see, if we can find a process to reverse the electric charge of a mass, then we transform this mass into antimatter. So this is a source of energy. You know, you have many people who are talking about free energy. Well, I don't really believe in it. It's talk, 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 chatter. This free energy, it's a tool to convert matter into antimatter, but you imagine immediately that it is, it is a huge bomb, huge weapon. Uh, in comparison, the thermonuclear weapons are like matches. <laughs> well, so we'll have a choice to do. Either when we discover the sources of energy, we use it to make craft to cross the fantastic distance to other stars, or as I you we use it to destroy the Earth. Right now, you know, we cannot uh, destroy completely the life on the Earth, but the consequences of nuclear war would be terrific. 
Think about the First World War and the Second World War. You had much destruction, uh, uh, many dead and so on. But how much time did it take to go to normality? Uh, well, uh, 50 years, no more. For uh, uh, a world war, when it, it is ended, it takes 50 years to, to rebuild the buildings. Uh, you put that in the cemetery, and then you f everything is, is forgotten. But with a nuclear war, it's not the same stuff. If we have a nuclear war, the consequence will stay 100,000 years. It is 10 times the, the length of the human history. It's crazy, you know, completely crazy. So you, we cannot, of course, somebody would say it is so crazy that it uh, prevents war. <laughs> uh, we have just called war. But right now, the instability of the world is so risky that uh, we can just wonder, we'll go to this uh, 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 world of war with nuclear weapons. What kind of weapons will we use? Well, I believe that we are visited. I believe that all around us there are people who have reached this kind of uh, technological level. And I was ta talking about uh, producing, producing energy. But then if you can inverse the mass, you can eliminate the, your waste. You have uh, um, tons of nuclear waste. Okay, give me your waste. I put it in the chamber and then I invert the mass. When the mass is inverted, inside this is pure vacuum. And you can fill this chamber with a turbine and a, a system to produce electricity. It would be amazing, you know. Um, you, you would be a competitor for uh, uh, waste treatment. Well, uh, energy elimination of waste, I think the last problem is the control for demography. Or uh, to control demographic process, you have just to give people something to eat and to give him to give them knowledge. If they have education, uh, the more educated the people are, the, the less they make they produce children. Demography is falling down in the country where the people have good standing. That's simple, simple. Well, now, how can we avoid uh, thermonuclear war? That's a good question, isn't it? Well, I'm working as I, as I can to, to show among the scientific community that interstellar travels are possible are not impossible, because we have this second side of the universe with very high uh, speed of light. And I, I would say that how to cruise in, in, in such situation? Well, you are in your craft, and then you, you change the sign of the mass. What happens? You become invisible, and in place, there is void. Well, then, do you need uh, a propeller? No, it's not a question of propulsion. It's a quantum process. When you appear in this negative world, you are in relativistic velocity. Uh, in, uh, when you are in positive mass condition, it costs a lot to accelerate and to reach uh, relativistic velocity. But if you are in negative state, it takes a lot of energy to break. <laughs> you have no, no break. Well, 
So, in terms of the loss, there are probable, are feasible. We can, we must think about that. And if scientists would think really about it, all this fights we manage are so childish, you know. We are like in a in a schoolyard full of children with dangerous weapons. Uh, it is so risky. Well, thank you for attention. I did my best about my poor English. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I don't think I would make much progress. And uh, the message is. Uh, um, it is placed in the scientific arena. And unfortunately, my colleagues are not very motiv motivated to think about it. They think about their careers. Uh, you, you, can, you, you can sell them with so much. They work for trusts and so on, for weaponry, enormous interest for everybody. I hope people will uh, take conscience about uh, the relative situation. Well, thank you very much for attention. Uh, goodbye from France.